back, but not for back. The time is for a chest. A little bit of chesties. I'm gonna, gonna smash the chesticles. Gonna go for an illegal hit. Now, I have not been to this Anytime Fitness before. Again, I'm going to a new gym. So, I don't think I'm gonna have any problem you know, getting some, to anytime fitness. getting some clips in, you know, uh, but you never know. So let's say get shut down, whatever. Maybe I'll just sneak some, Ooh. but same as usual. I, uh, I feel like I was bringing this up a lot in the last leg day video. The first car talk on the way to the gym, I was really yapping. I was talking for like, I don't even know. It felt like 20 minutes, but you know, what I was getting into was we've got our heavy sets. I'm talking incline Smith, incline bench, incline dumbbells, incline hammer strength press. Of course, I you know love incline, so I'm gonna recommend everybody do incline. But you know, I, I did flat for a pretty long time too. Don't think that I don't like flat bench. You know, I'm just saying incline is probably where you're gonna see the most substantial gains. Purely due to the fact that, I mean, your upper chest, and I'm not talking about you specifically, but just lifters in general, upper chest is typically a bit of a weak point. And not because it's like an insanely difficult muscle to grow or anything like that. Just the nature of it, it's kind of in a little bit of an in-between state, you know? Like when you do anything overhead, so if you're doing, you know, shoulder press, whatever, getting pretty much all front delt maybe maybe you get a little bit of upper chest but pretty much a zilch you know and then when you do any kind of dip or uh well i guess i mean mainly dip but even some pullovers you get a little bit of lower chest activation you know a lot of the time your chest is going to get activated just in life sort of pushing on something downward or just you know straight up sideways it's not so often that you're kind of you know pushing like this and apart from directly targeting your upper chest by doing incline work, you know, it just doesn't really come into play. So that's kind of why for the last few years, I've really just been biasing upper chest. Plus, it's just kind of a cooler look, you know, like I kind of want to build a chest shelf. You know, I don't need, well, obviously it will add mass to my chest for sure, but I don't want my lower chest to develop quicker than my upper chest then I it's not like it's a saggy look but actually it kind of is a saggy look in a way so take a look at your chest you pretty much got mid lower upper if any of those are out of whack more likely than not either upper or lower then you know just bias that one and you know, try to change it though I really don't think you're gonna have to work lower chest directly I mean I can't, ugh, I don't think I've ever seriously done decline bench. I have, I don't know. I do like dips. I do like dips, especially in a superset. Like, let's say I do incline bench straight into dips. I do like that. The only reason I haven't been doing it now is because my shoulders are not incredibly mobile. And that's, uh, that's due only to the fault of myself for not stretching out. I am going to work on that. I want to wanna get to the point where I can be nice and limber. So, uh, when I go back to school, I want to get a little clip of my uh, little diving clip for sure. I can still do all that shit, you know? Freaking flips upon flips into the water. Jump in on, on your feet, land on your head. But if I'm not properly warmed up and stretched, then... I feel like more likely than not, I, uh, I'm just gonna take my hamstrings and split them in half as though I used a razor blade just by trying to bend myself like that. Uh, so, whatever, try to get that image out of your head. Let's just focus on chest. So, heavy pressing followed by maybe lighter squeezing pressing followed by flies. Either pec deck, uh, cable, dumbbell I've been staying away from I, I don't know, I'm just not really a huge fan. Because if you do them on a bench, then, I don't know, I mean, you're just kind of like, I don't, I don't like it. I feel like I'm going to rip my pecs off. Because if I hit failure on bench, 
Doing flies, I mean, there's nothing to hold my arms apart from the fact, well, there's nothing there. So if I do a really good rep, and then I lose control of that negative, oh, yeah, straight to Freaksville, and not in a good way. So I used to do them on the floor, like, uh, you know, you'd grab, I mean, I would go pretty heavy, as heavy as you could go, sit down on the floor, act like you're about to do a neutral grip dumbbell chest press, and then instead of doing a normal press, you just do a fly. And then your elbows get to bump into the floor. You're not going to rip your pecs off. So you can do a really good set to failure. Maybe I'll throw that in. I don't know. Maybe not. To be determined. But we'll see. Oh my goodness. We'll see. So let's, uh, let's just cut to that first working set. All right. After a proper warm up, tries, shoulders, forearms, rotator cuff, and then doing a plate, two plates, three plates. I think I just want to stick to three. Uh, I don't really want to be jumping into you know 365 territory right now, just subjective feeling wise. But you know, let's throw this around for as many as I can do. And I should be getting at least into the teens range for sure. That is for sure. Okay, one more at least. You know, if you've noticed, my depth has improved dramatically. I was benching foolishly high up in the beginning of this year. I like the stretch. I'm glad I kind of switched that up a little bit. Sometimes I go a little bit high if I'm going really heavy, but for the most part, I'm getting, I'm getting a lot deeper than before. Let's just move on to incline hammer strength. Hard to beat hammer strength incline press, at least for, you know, machine presses. So I'm already exposed to a lot of weight from doing incline, incline barbell, you know. <coughs> it's been a while since I've done this machine, so I did do some feeler reps just to make sure it felt good, but I'm already exposed to weight. I'm ready to jump into a legit, <coughs> oh my goodness. Ugh. I didn't bring a water bottle. My throat's getting really dry. But I'm ready to jump into a good set. So let me play some kind of music and get hyped up. Let's do one more, but three plates instead of four. Four is, I think four is too heavy now. Ugh. 
Okay. Okay. As much as I love this machine, I get a lot of front delt activation. And not only that, but unwanted front delt activation. So I think that's enough of this. Let's, um, let's find a pec tech. We're on to the flying portion of the movement, I think. Or portion of the set. I'm gonna work out. Whatever. Oop. All right, so I was, uh, I was almost a little bit disappointed. I couldn't find the regular pec fly. You know, the one with the two arms. It's just a classic. But I did see this. And rather than just being a chump and say, oh, I've never tried that before, I'm gonna move on. Did a feeler wrap. The squeeze is fucking killer. I don't necessarily feel the tension that I can feel with a really heavy, like standard life fitness fly. But I think two of these are gonna feel pretty sweet. And then maybe I finish with like bent over cable flies and this pump is gonna be, it's might be one to remember. Ugh. Okay. One more. Let's finish with one kind of something with some cables and then check the pump somewhere. Moderate weight, you know, in front of the body flies and then kind of bend over, finish off with bent over. I guess that kind of goes without saying, but whatever. And I think this chest day is done. A little bit higher volume than I've been doing, but I mean, it feels pretty good. Yeah. <sighs> That wasn't an absolute bananas failure. That's kind of just to add the finishing touches. But let's, uh, let's pose down. Hope I don't make me mad. And get out of here. All right. So one thing I did not read in the Anytime Fitness contract was uh, a shirtless posing policy. And if it's there, I definitely must have skimmed it. So let's see how we're looking chest-wise. Oh my goodness. I've seen worse, in worse lighting as well. Oh, yeah, the lighting does leave just a, just a touch to be desired. Yeesh, but not too much. I mean, whew. there's not really a, um, a comparable situation. When your arms are pumped, you know, you can't touch your shoulders. But when your chest is pumped, you just kind of, you just kind of pumped. You just know. Maybe I should measure my bust before and after. I guess that'd be a good way to indicate how good the pump was. But no point uh, sitting here anymore. Let's go eat, man. I'm out. I gotta get some grub in my system. Pronto. That, honestly, apart from one thing, I do think that the, um, those inclined hammer strength press sets, I think maybe I could have, uh, maybe I could have not done so much weight on those purely due to the fact that, I mean, uh, I just get so much 
front dell work you know i mean it's nuts but still feels crazy so i do like it but it kind of comes at a cost that's another uh maybe not another but that's probably one of the reasons why i don't do any direct front delt work you know my uh my front delts my shoulders just in general but my front delts on their own they are overpowering overpowered they're op they're uh they don't need to be as large as they are so that's pretty much as good of a way as i can say it so that's pretty much why i never do shoulder press you know i used to do shoulder press on the regular every chest day was a uh, well actually I don't remember what my split was when I was doing shoulders on a consistent basis, but I was doing them, you know, I was doing like, I was much smaller at the time, but I was doing hundreds for, you know, at least 10 reps seated, a uh, dumbbell shoulder press to, uh, I don't remember how many plates, but I loved behind the neck Smith machine overhead press. That was, uh, that was one that just really got to me. I really enjoyed the, I don't know, I guess everything about it, squeeze the stretch, whatever. I just liked it. But, you know, being a responsible lifter and kind of being able to see like, oh shit, my front delts are making my fucking bicep peak look smaller. They don't need to be as big as they are. You know, that's my cue to say, no more front delts, man. I'll still throw in side and rear because even though they are developed reasonably well relative to my frame, eh, big ass rear delts just make you look cool. I didn't mean for this to turn into a shoulder rant post-workout, but I guess it's too late to turn back now. You know, what is going to make your shoulders pop? And uh, this is not a, I'm not asking this rhetorically. You know, you tell me what's going to make your shoulders really, I don't know, just you know, be able to have a serious amount of pronounced roundness to them. And it's, a little bit of a little bit of a secret to it. A little bit of a tip. It's not the front delts. No, it's going to be the rear delts. When you stand from the side, or when you're doing like a, a side chest, like I was doing earlier, having really big rear delts makes the back of your shoulder nice and round, like you've actually got a fucking shoulder pad on. You know. So if your rear delts are really slacking, then you're kind of just going to have a slanted look. And even if you have really good posture, I have uh, absolute dog posture on my shoulders at least i've got a real bad hunch but even if you have really good posture if you have really small rear delts you're not gonna kind of stand out with big broad shoulders you know because the back of your well, the back of your shoulders aren't gonna be pronounced it's just gonna kind of smooth over you know so not the best situation luckily i was able to get that ingrained into my head so even when i was a beginner i'm talking like six ish or three months in I was doing um, a lot of bent over dumbbell lateral raises. So those would be you know, rear delt targeted. Uh, but apart from the fact that you need to hit all of them with a reasonable amount of volume, assuming they do need to be worked and they have to be brought up for your specific build, don't get bored. You know, Don't get bored of sitting there and doing you know, upwards of fucking eight or ten sets of lateral raises in a row. Because... You know, that's all you can do, you know? So just because you're doing the same thing over and over and over again does not mean that you're not actually progressing towards a freaky-ass shoulder pump. And, uh, one, one more little bit of shoulder info before I talk about some other shit. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to catch you doing 50-pound lateral raises if to do them with any reasonable amount of, let's call it, range of motion, you have to fucking go absolutely crazy nuts as... That sounds a little funky coming from me because, you know, I like those sets of hammer strength press where I'm like just like bouncing the bottom of the partial rep. But I don't really think shoulders respond to that kind of shit, you know? Like for shoulders, that's where I lean towards lower weight, higher rep squeezing sets. And you know, by doing that, crazy pump, insane burn to the point where even just like standing in a neutral position, my shoulders are just on fire. Clearly, it's done a little bit of something for me, but that's not really a, that's not proof that that method works. You know, that's just proof that it works for me. So make sure uh, make sure to take all this random fitness mumbo jumbo with a grain of salt. 
and balance it out with shit that you've actually found out for yourself. Like what you like and what you don't like. But getting back to chest, solid pump. Lighting was a little subpar. I learned afterwards talking to some regulars that that was not the best lighting spot in the gym. So maybe tomorrow for back, uh, I'll find the cooler spot. And it should be um, 747 wide. I would not mind that at all. So that's the plan for tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be back in there for cardio too, but there's nothing really to record there. Honestly, every time I post a cardio video, all the comments are like, why are you fucking, why are you showing us this? Because, uh, you know what, guys? I'm not oblivious. I'm not oblivious. I can learn, right? I know when I'm not wanted. I know when you don't want to see me tell you to do your cardio. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop preaching it, but... Oof. Yeah, you, get, you get what I'm saying there. Guaranteed you're not doing it. And I can guarantee with a pretty high degree of certainty that you're missing out. So, it's not even really an argument. I'm just kind of... <laughs> like, I don't feel like I'm arguing the value of cardio. I just feel like I'm showing off the tangible benefits, or at least I'm trying to show off the tangible benefits, which you get from it, which for whatever reason, you know, not you, I know you do your cardio consistently, on the daily, 30 minutes, nice sweat, moderate intensity, nothing crazy, you know, I know that's you, but everybody else, they've been slacking, and I mean, come on, it's something where you know you should do it too, right, as a kid, you know you should do your homework, you know, you should probably eat your vegetables and drink, you know, finish your plates so you can grow up big and strong. But for whatever reason, you know, something about adolescence or, I guess, yeah, probably adolescence, you start to think, ah, who cares? Screw that. I don't want to do any freaking cardio. Ugh. So, that's enough of my little cardio rant. That's enough of my little cardio speech. But I don't really have anything else. I got to pick up some groceries. Uh, steaks. Actually, I don't know what I'm going to get. A variety of treats, I can guarantee. But the likes of which will carve me up and give me a fantastic back day tomorrow. That gym has some really cool back machines, too. I'm really excited to use some of those hammer strength plate loaded ones. Plus an actual chest supported T bar row. Oh my goodness, it has been too long since I've used one of those. So that's all I got, man. I'll catch you next time.